and we are live all right today is january 21st episode 53 of talking yanks jake 53 is a weird yankees number who do you think of number 53 does anyone pop into your brain 53, 53. milky milky that is who i thought of as well i don't Easy know if one. there's any other i don't know if there's any other 53 Bobby Abreu, I guess, wore 53. Bobby Abreu. And a dude named Johnny Cux in 1955. All right, it's still the off season. I don't think you can say that on the on the radio. Johnny <laughs> Cux. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's K-U-C-K-S. Johnny Cux. And Lee Mazzilli. I think, hey. I think that said Cooks. Pronounced Cooks. Cooks I think. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, today is January 21st. We're talking Yanks, babe. Music. Music, music, music. Enter the music here. We're gonna rock on through Electric Avenue. Can't use that. Can't use that. All right. What's up, everybody? Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. My name is John Boy. I'm coming to you from California, outside of San Francisco, Northern California, just home from a baby shower, just ready to talk some Yanks. I got my co host, Jake, in Denver, two transplanted Yankee fans. Say hi, Jake. Hi, hi Jake. And I, I think we should, uh, you know, we've been, the baseball post postseason, off season, has been weirdly slow. I'd, I'd like to hear a little bit more about the baby shower. I think the people would. You baby love shower? babies. That's something that your listeners should know. Yeah, I love babies. So there was a seventh month old baby there named Luca. And I think for a, the whole Patriots game, Luca was on my lap, chilling with me. Real chill, real happy baby. If a baby walks in and is like laughing and smiling and a happy baby right away, I'm just like, give me that baby. And then I just sit on the couch with it for hours on end. I think that's wild. Luca's mom walked over about 20 times and was like, if you, if you want to like let him go, I'll take him back. Just let me know. And I was like, hey, as long as Luca isn't crying, He's not leaving my lap because this is my heaven. See, that's insane. I love little babies. That's crazy. I, if I'm holding a baby, I need to be sitting. I need to be seated. It needs to be like a stable couch. If there's any room yeah. for error, I'm out. And I need Whoa. someone playing free safety. <laughs> I need another human supervising both of us. No. Uh, so if it's under like four months, I'm out. It needs to be able to hold its neck up. Otherwise, no. Okay. Fun. I need to be okay. able to pull, hold it in the air and do airplane and be like, Wee! okay. Luke so you like to entertain the baby. Yeah. yeah. The baby laugh. See, like my ideal audience is a bunch of babies. And then my grandma 10 times. Cause I'll have that audience in <laughs> stitches so easily. And then throw a couple duplicates of myself. Cause I find myself funny and I'm, <laughs> I'm so rich. If that's my audience, just me, my grandma and a bunch of babies. You're killing it. Killing it, yeah. Like more, more. I, on, so many encores. I've I've got a good I've got a good story that I I think will show a little bit of me to the to the viewing audience from this weekend. If that's okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. You got a haircut? Is it about that? I got a haircut. I I was gonna mention that I was I was mad you didn't say anything in pre production, but that's okay. I was still a little I was, too short. No, not like I when was, it grows out. I was saving it for the show. If there's one thing about me, I'm a haircut noticer. I'm a serial haircut noticer. You are. Anyone. Attention to detail. Yeah. Because usually detail leads to a good joke at some point. I get it. Yeah. Got to be observant. But so yesterday I went to karaoke with uh, our friend Jeff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we've got a pretty normal karaoke routine. We don't want to steal the show. <laughs> we, kinda, we hang out. We do a couple songs. Everyone's like, okay, that was, <laughs> that was okay. It's still... <laughs> Like everyone else is crazy drunk. <laughs> Not sure what you guys are really doing, but <laughs> so we like call it at like midnight. I go, I go back home. Jeff goes back to his home, and so I take the dog out. And one of my friends, Mark, calls me when I'm taking the dog out. He's like, "Dude, you should come over. We've got a crew, and we're gonna watch Pineapple Express." And I was like, "And it's kind of funny because it's." You know, when you used to go out on a Saturday night or whatever in college or whatever it might be, you know, you're 
you go out, you go hard and your, your stories end up a little differently or they or like your bad decision is, Oh, I got dominoes or oh, I can't believe we came back and ripped those shots, whatever it was. Mark called me and was like, Oh, we got a crew watching pineapple express. And I was like, you know what? I've got a little buzz going. I'm, I'm still young enough that I party. I'll go. So I go over. It's like a 10 minute Uber. I show up. There's like six people. They're, they went to the mountains, so they were like tired from the day. So they were just winding down with a movie. And I get over there, didn't make it through the first scene, passed out, fell asleep instantly. And so wake up, 9 a.m. Girlfriend Jess is pissed because has no idea where I am. And there's a snowstorm. So she thought I like froze to death outside. <laughs> <laughs> and so luckily. One of her friends was over there who's like her most one of her most trustworthy one of the most trustworthy people you meet and was like, Oh yeah, Jake <laughs> Jake's over here. He's just been sleeping. <laughs> I was like, well, hey, I, I went I, I'm cool, I'm hip, I can go watch a movie. And now and so many parts of that story are just scream like, man, it sucks growing up. Right. Right. And you got kids listening to us in college are like, what the fuck? The, the the plan to begin with, hey, we're watching like having a like not like a brand new movie. You're <laughs> watching Pineapple Express. Yeah. That's, that's a movie you catch on FX and just watch through a couple commercials and give up. Right. Not a plan. Right. And then you just came over, fell asleep first scene. Hey, I mean, good for you, man. Out yeah. living. So that was a that was a little bit of my weekend for the fans. I did a wedding yesterday, uh, which is my third to last wedding because I am officially going full time with talking to Yanks and John Boy videos make, and everything. No official announcement. Is this it? Yeah, because you know what? Someone was like, "Dude, I the Greg Bird one. You said you had a meeting with your investor, and then yeah. the next episode, you never said what happened." And I was like, "Oh yeah, I did it. I forgot about that. It's official. <laughs> here's, the, here's the announcement. There it is. So this is a big there episode. It it's a big episode. Yeah, March March first. So uh, I got a month left of." double time and march 1st man all i got is ideas i just want to make videos and make people i want to make watching the yankees more fun for other people if you're watching the yankees and you're on twitter or using the internet i want you i want to enjoy be i want you to i want to make being yankee fan more fun right make funny jokes make videos entertain people that is my goal and uh and you guys can help out by you know buying a shirt here and there listening to the podcast i don't know Got all these ideas burning through burning my brain. Through my skull. skull? Is it skull? Yeah, I got these ideas, yeah. man. They're burning through my skull like a hat. A hat that just says Stussy on it or a shirt. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Jack Black. I watched a Jack Black movie last night. Dude, you'd love it. It's not really a good movie. He plays the king of polka. So it's just Jack Black doing polka music in a Polish accent. Yeah. For an hour and a half. That's, you'd love like, it. that's a dream of mine. All right, we got to do some Yankees talk or baseball talk. Oh, hey. I, I've already known, but congrats on the full-time stuff. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm, uh, I mean, it, whether it takes off, whether it doesn't, it's going to be the best summer of my life since, and you know, I have bills. We are, we are actually absolutely going to crush March. We, we have plans for March. What, what can we reveal? What can't we reveal? I don't know. I don't know. We got a, so come spring training. Talking Yanks is going to be putting out a lot of content. When we get to spring training, March sixteenth, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff. If you have ideas, if you have anything, if you want to be part of stuff, let us know. Do we mention the PPPs? Can we even feed no. them that? No. No, it's, we no, can't. Not yet. We can't. Not yet. PPPs was your only hit. Stay tuned. Yeah, can't. Okay. All right. Uh, pitch clock. We're going to start with pitch clock, and I uh, don't have. I don't have that many hot takes. Actually, I do. I kind of came off real hot against it. And right. then I did some more digging, which, you know, is good to do. First, I will read, in case you do not know about this. They tried to implement 20-second pitch clock in all situations. So you can throw a pitch. You got 20 seconds to throw the next pitch. Or as soon as you get the ball back from the catcher, you got 20 seconds to throw the next pitch. 30 seconds between batters. So say one guy strikes out, the next guy gets up, 30 seconds. That seems fast to me. Whatever. Um, all violations enforced with automatic balls strikes starting opening day. You get one warning per player per game before penalties issued. So a starter is slow in the first inning, one warning. The next time, it's a ball. 
and also one mound visit from manager, coach, or player per inning. Second mound visit necessitates a pitching change. Let's just talk about the clock before we talk about mound visits. So Paul Swiden on Twitter said, uh, the average pace for the fastest team last year which is a weird way to put it, which makes this kind of half not trustworthy. It was 22.7 seconds. But if it was the average pace for everyone, that would make sense. I don't – it just seems like a weird that, – that there wasn't a like pitcher – there wasn't a pitcher in the majors last year who had a pace under 18 seconds. And they want – so – and they want a 20-second pace. What are your – let's open – let's start here, Jake. Does the Major League Baseball have a pace of play problem? Partially, yes. I, I think absolutely. I, I I laugh because it's the best baseball of the regular season, but like Yankees Red Sox games naturally being four and a half hour events is kind of ludicrous. Like I know I know we like personally enjoy that. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it's kind of extra fun for us. But thinking as ba- baseball as a whole, you just you know, a big football game doesn't take an extra hour and a half. A big basketball game doesn't take an extra an hour and a half. Maybe basketball, the breaks are a little longer, something like that. Football, not even, not really. That's kind of a tightly run ship. And I, I feel like when we were getting into baseball as youth, if you were to throw in a Yankee game in, I don't know, mid-90s, and maybe it's just bad brain, but it felt like the games went a little quicker. No, I mean, I'm is sure that something to, do with, something to do with commercials? And maybe I just made that up. I probably should have had a stat for that. Uh, definitely little things. I think our biggest thing that we fully agree on is like baseball at its core, still fine. You don't need to, I don't know. The seconds in watching something seem like totally different. You know what I'm saying? I I think I don't know what that point is. The seconds. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying I feel like some of the all-time slow pitchers, Steve Traxel. Yeah. Sonny Gray First trying Sonny to get Gray. his name. In, <laughs> Sonny Gray trying to get his name up there. So Sonny Gray's slow. I do you think that noticeable. You think it would be beneficial to speed up Sonny Gray and all pitchers of his like? Yes. I agree there. On a whole, it would be better. What I don't what I don't get is okay, so like my question is MLB have a pace to play issue. MLB breathes. Like I like watching baseball because every single pitch I'm trying to guess. Okay, well, he just threw this pitch outside. So now let's see what they're thinking. And right. I'm trying to get into the mind of the pitcher and the catcher and the batter, like trying to guess. And that takes a couple seconds to do. And that is my the joy of baseball. Now there's casual people that watch. Right. That don't get that involved, right? So, but my first thing is, isn't there an – I'm no business major. I know shit about business. But isn't there an 80-20 rule that says – 20% of your fan base makes up 80% of your sales, profit, all that. So if the diehards are the ones buying season tickets, are the ones buying MLB packages, are the ones spending all their money on gear and shit, and the diehards are saying, we love this. Right. Isn't there some credence to, okay, well, serve the people that love the game. With saying that, so I th- I think they're I think they are too much attached. That pace of play is the problem of baseball. Like I don't think that that is the main problem. I just think they're just stuck on it. Yeah, I I don't know. I during the season, I think rate of play only gets brought up a couple times a year. Usually a Yankees Red Sox game or Steve Traxel taking naps on the mound, but. <laughs> Yeah, they're it's tough. I, I think the base runner thing that was mentioned was pretty important. There's there's the old adage, it's something you hear Coney or Paul O'Neill say every other week is speed slows down the game. I think and 
again, there's some beauty in that, right? The pitcher meaning, slowing down. Meaning, yeah, so meaning if a fast runner gets on base, the pitcher pays so much more attention to him with pickoffs and long moves and stepping off the mound. Right. That when speed, for anyone that didn't know that, hasn't heard that term before. So speed slows down the game because if a fast runner comes on, everything slows down for the pitcher. Which, call me crazy, I, I did a little <laughs> – I just did it right now. I did, I did a little head tilt when I heard that part of it. Because that part does – maybe it's the way I play all sports as a 5'7 <laughs> hobbit. But <laughs> stolen bases are becoming less and less in a factor in baseball. There's all these numbers about, you know, let the big bopper swing it. Does that extra base really do anything, risk-reward, et cetera, et cetera. I would love to see base running become more involved in a game. I, I, I mean, there's something so – if you look at baseball as a game of chess, if you have – if there's a catcher back there, like I remember the Piazza games. There's still a couple guys in the majors that can't really throw it too well, and you get you get six stolen base days, stuff like that. But, I mean, that was like a, 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 <laughs> more chess analogies. That was a bishop or a rook. That was such a weapon. You were – Okay, if you want to play your Mike Piazza on the dish, that's fine. He's going to, you know, greatest hitting catcher ever. But if we get on the base pass, we're going to have a field day. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I'd, li I'd like to see the speed guys get more involved. And there's – at times it's beautiful. I know Michael K gets on him too much for it. But you know, there are times in later innings when Gary and Dellen are discussing every other pitch. And that's, so that's tough. So I think, which was my point, I don't think seconds. So you have the sunny grades who are slow, speed them up, whatever. But I think the thing that slows down the game more are mound visits and pitching changes. And mound visits are tough. Only one mound visit per inning, that's stupid. When a runner gets on and you have to change signs and you have catchers who speak a different language and pitchers and you can't, like, that's. Well, is that, that's for catchers? I thought that was just for managers. It like was for anyone, coach. even if the first baseman comes and talks on the mound. Really? That counts as one per inning. That's yeah, that's interesting. What so that's crazy because say like, okay, a speedster gets on first. The first baseman wants to say, like put a play in motion and go run to the pitcher and tell him. That shouldn't count as his one mound visit. Say uh, they pinch hit for a dude in the seventh who they didn't plan for beforehand, and now the catcher has to go run up to the pitcher and talk about their strategy against a new batter. I, I, told, I That slows down the game. When Gary goes out there and talks all the time, it slows right. down the game. But I think it's kind of a necessary evil for the strategy of the game. It depends. But, I, I could see people going coming back at you saying, you know, be prepared. <laughs> at, that, at the root of that, that's like a baseball half lazy thing. <laughs> like, it's good to discuss it. But before the game, you should know if Dave Roberts is going to pinch run what your game plan is going to be as an infield and catcher, you know? And they do, yeah. but it's still sports and double-checking so you don't end up on not top if 10 was, later that night. If I was to implement a rule, in, like, like the players union probably wouldn't like this for safety reasons, I would say every time there's a pitching change, and the MLB won't like this for money reasons, every time there's a pitching change, dude gets one pitch on the mound, one or two pitches on the mound, and we don't go to commercial. Dude runs in, throws a pitch or two, game on. So we don't need a three-minute break in between every pitching change. It's brainstorming's funny because I normally don't brainstorm anything in my life. How about we move the bullpens closer? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so they're not running from the outfield. Put some more seats in the outfield. Pitchers have to get warmed up next to the dugout somewhere in under under the dugout, and you got ten seconds to come out instead of. You know, I mean, everyone besides seems, Dave Dave Robertson doing his Forrest Gump is just, you know, lollygagging it into the it, mouth. Let me get my 13 yeah. throws. We're talking about like five seconds off a pitch clock, but it, every time there's a pitching change, we cut to a three-minute commercial, and half that time, if you're ever at the game, is them just standing around waiting for the comeback from commercial because he's already warmed up. What if I'm – now Now my brain's going off such a path. What if – what if if you change pitchers in an inning, they were forced to finish that inning? So instead of that going makes, like, I know, <laughs> instead of going loogie, righty, loogie, something like that, I don't know. I think that would be, it would be kind of funny. And I always, 
I always put on this hat when I when these type of conversation when rules conversations come up. When they originally created the game, if they had that rule, would we make a fit over it today? Like the one I just kind of made up? No. If you grew up playing yeah. baseball and the pitcher had to finish an inning, you'd just be like, okay, yeah, that's part of the game. So I don't know. I do they have a major problem? No. I think your 80-20 example is pretty good. But <laughs> I think a chunk of that 20%, I the 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 facts are there. It's a lot of older people in the older generation that you know, still don't mind spending three and a half hours on a Tuesday night where they, a, a lot of whatever our generation is, we're, what are we, after millennials? Are we generation Y? We're are we? No, we're are we? Yeah. So good. One last thing. But I, I think we're in the, we're in the minority there for millennials. Millennials like instant action, this, that, and the other. And there's, it's absolutely beautiful if you're a millennial that grew up playing baseball because, like you said, it's every pitch. <clears throat> for if, if I watch the game with my girlfriend, she she wants to see a home run. If she walks in and she sees that the game is one nothing in, like, the fifth inning, she'll be like, oh, shocker, one nothing baseball game. And I just, like, vein comes out of the neck, like, you have no idea what <laughs> you just said. It's been epic. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think if they do father or put in a time clock, we'll get used to it and it won't be that big of a deal. But I think baseball is, 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 is working on a fix for something that isn't the problem. Like I don't just, right. If they juice the baseballs last year and that's why there's more home runs. Good. That was a smart solution. Yeah. They're, they're so fixated on pace of play. I don't think it's the real issue. I think they're trimming fat a little bit. There's there's some definite definite areas they can trim up a little bit. Imagine if they um, cut to a commercial every time you pinch hit a dude, like he just stood in the box and just like st- yeah. just did all his stretches and like swung, and they were like, "Oh, we got a good commercial." They put in a new hitter. Like, no, that dude was in the batting cage underneath the clubhouse, right. warming up and getting ready, and he came in and hit. Do that with the pitchers instead of cutting yeah. to a commercial every time the pitcher comes in. I like that. How about and this last last idea for me, because I think everyone's fear in this is a postseason nightmare, where a judge, a judge, <laughs> an umpire, we call them in baseball. Actually, Thank, thanks for listening to Talking Yanks. An umpire, I know that you're was bizarre. You're a huge fan of uh, Country Joe West because he takes over the game and makes it about him. He s- sarcasm, folks, but. <laughs> if we if we have a playoff moment where an ump calls a a pitch or a non pitch a a speed <laughs> rate of play violation, I mean that is going to that's just going to dominate the news in in a news year where referees in sports are just getting roasted. The NBA refs are in a rough spot. The NFL has been getting roasted for years. I think you're just you're setting the MLB up to have another part of the game be looked at, they're going to be talking about the umpire because so one of them is going to make the call because they're by the book because that's what they're supposed well, to do. And now well, we're going to have – It's not a judgment call, though. Like they did it in the AFL when Justice Sheffield was pitching and it was right. 13 seconds, which was crazy. And it was a big clock. Right. Uh, when it went zero, the ump waved his hands at the pitch. If he wasn't like in his windup. So it's not, but it's crazy if it if it impacts a big moment. But I don't. I think the umps will be free because it's not judgment. Yeah, and I, it's it's people are going to be home at home with their stopwatches. Everyone's going to start their stopwatch at a different time. Now are the are there no going to be home? That. Are there going to be home clocks and where the the away team starts the clock a lot faster for the opposing team, but not for their team? Oh yeah. I mean, you're, you're I'm going, all for that. It starts. <laughs> it starts getting a little slippery. So, love we'll see. All right, let's move on. Let's move on to this is a new thing we're gonna do and try to keep it going throughout the season called Stadium Stories. Very, very creative and unique name, Stadium Stories. So I asked on Twitter for people to call in, um, email. We got some. Jake and I maybe share some weird shit. I don't know. But uh, if you're at the stadium, if you've been at the stadium, and you've seen something bizarre in the stands. Some drunk fight, someone get kicked out. I mean, that's to be something a little more interesting than just a fight. But some weird shit happens in the stands sometimes. 
uh, call in. Let us know. That shit's fun. Not not talking like I was at walk off. Like no, I'm talking off the field in the stands. Weird shit. Also semi lighthearted. Like I I don't need to hear the oh I punched this Red Sox fan right in the face. Like if there's a good story leading up to it, interested. If just over beers and baseball, half not. Is that unfair? Yeah, what kind of fan are you? Let's do that real quick. Me? Yeah, what's, what are you doing at a game? Are you screaming and yelling every pitch? Are you sitting in silence? Are you interacting with fans? Are you talking to people? You know me. I, it's, it's always jokes. Like, yeah. I, if, if there's an annoying fan who's yelling or something, I'm going to wait for the, the opportune time to say something loud enough for the others to hear that's making fun of the annoying fan. So now we're laughing at them. And hopefully, because if if the annoying fan, if it's someone screaming the whole time, and you give, just as one person, give the, hey, buddy, keep it down, you could get a good reaction. Most likely you're going to get the, hey, man, I'm just enjoying the game, blah, blah, blah. If you can come low-key with a mass attack, if I get 30 people laughing at you right then, now you realize 30 people are laughing at you. So, I'm, um, you know me, I'm a big fan of a good boo. Right. Like if you have one dude who's just standing up in the front of the section, being obnoxious, blo- standing up when you shouldn't be standing up, blocking everyone news, if you just let out a low, like, boo, and then people get on the boo with you. Right. That's power in numbers, getting too. Getting boo sucks. Yeah. All right. Well, you you want you have any st- ones prepared? Stadium stories. Stadium stories, man. Fourth of July, I got just absolutely roasted one year. That was pretty miserable. The one that you and me shared a laugh about, and I, I'll just set the tone. And this this was on the way to City Field. We were in a bathroom at City's Field using the urinal on our way out, and this, <laughs> this is, I don't know how you say this on a podcast, a gentleman grabbed and shook his biscuits at me. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jake was at the urinal. Dude was at the urinal next to him. I was washing my hands. I was talking to Jake. I look over, and the dude next to Jake was staring Jake's in the face. He wasn't facing the urinal. No. He, his hips were facing Jake. His eyes were into Jake's eyes. He had his dick in his hand. And was just shaking it like a shake just wave. Shaking it, not sexually. Uh, just like I don't even know. It's just like vicious. Like the way you'd shake meat at a tiger at like a zoo when it was feeding. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunately a good comparison. And we got out of the bathroom, and I said, "Jake, did you see that guy shaking his dick at you?" And Jake said, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's that's. I was a little spooked because I, in your head, you're telling myself, okay, maybe that didn't just happen. Maybe maybe the angles in this bathroom are weird, and I dreamed it. And then you and another buddy were there, and they're like, oh my god. <laughs> so that's, that's so yeah. That's, that's either a fun one. The the other one that I mentioned to you before this, it's a, a quick one. My first time to the stadium, which is a huge, you know, father son moment. My my dad brought me to the game. And it's, you know, seeing Yankee Stadium, seeing where Lou Gehrig plays, seeing what where DiMaggio used to hang out, all of it. And it's tough. And I'm sure there's stories like this, just with new age cameras and stuff. But he thought I was going to be in shock of how large the stadium was. And I was like, so we walk out one of the tunnels, see the field for the first time. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is cool. But he expected like my – you know, jaw to be on the floor, like, wow, I'm at Yankee Stadium. But with cameras and stuff, I mean, it feels like I'm watching the game from behind the pitcher's mouth. <laughs> so <laughs> it was it was, it was, was a little less dramatic. Yeah, yeah these seats suck on TV. <laughs> I can see the pitch break. <laughs> I could have a sandwich. Uh, so, yeah, those, those are those are some brief <laughs> it locked, stadium. It's, it's hilarious because yeah. back in the day, you have, like, Rudy, like Rudy's dad, when he saw Notre Dame for the first time, he's like, it's the most beautiful sight my eyes have ever seen. Yeah, dude, because right. you've been watching it on black and white on an eight-inch screen for your whole life. Or imagine the beauty of, I, I mean, when my father first went, I, I believe he had only listened on radio or maybe saw a couple clips. Yeah. 
So yes, when, when you've heard your childhood dreams on the radio and you fantasized it like an amazing book or something like that, and then they finally, your eyes put it to screen, like that has to be incredible, but <laughs> ruined generation. <laughs> You imagine there's people that listen to Talking Yanks that have never seen videos of us or anything, and they like meet us in person and are like, "Ugh, don't think I can listen anymore." You guys are I really feel, short and ugly. I feel like we've prepped them for the worst. So okay, good. All right, uh, let's see. I have some notes here. I'm just gonna rip through them because mine aren't really stories. They're just kind of fun tidbits. I thought of. There was a three-year stretch where I didn't go to Yankee Stadium without throwing up in one of the toilets before the game started. That was really good. Let the nerves um, get to you. No, because we were usually so hungover, and I and in college, woke up hungover. I was like, "Fuck this! I'm not going to be hungover all day." So I would just eat something and then throw it, and then, and it would absorb all the alcohol in my stomach. Then I'd throw it up. All the poison was out of my body. Worked Jackie, amazing. Jack, was that Jackie Chan? No onions. Is that, Yankee was that a Yankee yeah. trip? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Also, we went to a Yankee trip once, like eight of us guys, and we're in the parking lot on like the third level, drinking beers, hanging out, young 20-ish guys. Uh, hey, let's pee before we go in. Love this. We all, all take turns peeing in the corner. Like I go pee in the corner, I leave. Jake goes pees in the corner, he leaves. Friend Ed pees in the corner, leaves. About six of us go. Last friend, Ken, who's a little skittish, a little nervous, got stage fright, stands in the corner, never pees because he's got stage fright, doesn't know if he has to pee, a little drunk, too drunk for thought. Security walks by the cops, and they see him standing in the corner with just a lot of piss. Ocean of piss. Ocean of piss. They're like, excuse me, sir, we're going to have to write you up a ticket for public urination. And he's like, I'm the only one here that didn't pee. It's like, I didn't pee. Like I, I'll pee again right now to prove that I didn't pee because no one can pee twice in a row. And they're like, it doesn't doesn't matter. <laughs> so he, it was it was hilarious because at first <laughs> it was it was seen from a funny movie, like kids saying, "Oh no, I didn't pee," but <laughs> miles of pee behind him. It's like, okay, kid, you you know, really awful lie. And then he was like, "No, like, seriously, I am yet to pee," and I'm I really so have to pee. And you saw you saw the realization on were they officers were they security what were they? I don't know. I don't know. I think they're but like, they you could see the change in their like face and just the way they were talking like wow that's gotta suck if we gave him the ticket and he still has to pee and so like we were <laughs> maybe this was well, we just were drunk me. I was like Ken pee right now pee your I pants give you two tickets you're gonna get the ticket just pee right now. I was yelling for your pants because I think I think if you're the officer or whoever that was and you watch someone pee their pants in front of you, that you have to rip that ticket up and say, nope, you sorry, you, you served honorably. Should we have split that ticket up and all paid it for Ken? Since oh, we were absolutely. The ones that, but we were all the friends. ones that peed that he didn't pee. But bad friends, yeah. we didn't do that. Okay. Um, one time I went to a game. And there was a Hasidic Jew standing uh, in the seats next to us. And my little brother was like four years old. And A-Rod hit a grand slam. And Luke, my little brother, had a A-Rod jersey on. And the gentleman next to us just picked up Luke. And we were all like, whoa. And he picked him up and spun him around. And we were like, what's going on? And he was showing off the A-Rod jersey to the stadium. And it was really like a uh, Coca-Cola sports brings everyone together moment. It's pretty cool. So it's beautiful. That was like a, I was like a, actually like a positive one. I was like, yeah, we all love A Rod. I think uh, Sean Green also homered in that game a while ago. Nice. All right, here's an email we got from Matthew, arguably the best Jewish hitter of all time, Sean Green. Well, there you go. So that's yeah. what the uh, Jewish guy's gift was after he celebrated with my brother. He got a Jewish home run. What's up? It's Matt on Twitter. Got a decent story for you guys on an experience at the stadium. About seven years ago, I took my buddy Corey with a K, not a fan of that, who has never been to a Yankee game in his life to the stadium. Ooh, never been in his life. These were the days when four locos were still capable of putting you on the brink of death, especially if you drink them fast. <sighs> Don't we know about that? That's when we were in college. We each had two original locos on the train ride in, grabbed a beer when we got in the stadium. Safe to say we were feeling pretty buzzed up. Uh, 
Problem, problem was how badly mistaken I was about Corey's state of spiritus. Uh, in the second inning, Corey gets up, says he's got to go to the bathroom. I say, if you're not back in two innings, I'm going to go look for you. Blah, 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 blah. 45 minutes, I start worrying. Two security guards come up to me and ask me if I'm Matt. To this day, I have no idea how they got this information. No idea how they knew my name or my seat number. Anyway, they reply, I reply, yes, what's going on? Security guard replies, your friend won't come out of the stall. <laughs> They bring me to his stall and I start banging on the door. I tell Corey it's me. And after three to four minutes of knocking on the cusp of getting on the floor and climbing underneath the stall, he somehow manages to open up. There sits Corey passed out on the toilet, leaning on the side of the stall, half asleep and puke on his pants. I finally managed to get Corey up and the security guard gives us two options, hospital in the Bronx or go home. We went home. I mean, everyone's been there, but the crazy thing about this is how nuts original Four Locos were. And if you don't yeah. know what those are, it was 2011. They were energy drinks and um, malt liquor mixed. Yeah. And we got some stories about, like, Jake, you, you've, been, you've been known to down one or two on the way to a bar and have a crazy night. Well, that's a story for another time. It was, I mean, in, in college, it was just, it was, it was magic. It was, it was pure magic. I, it that the story that I'm talking about ends with Jake walking towards a dorm with a uh, thing of gasoline trying to burn down the dorm. <laughs> well, when you say it like that, it sounds a little scary. I was gonna say in a more positive light, it was just college. You could drink two of these for like seven bucks and be very drunk. Uh, we had a friend who was. Who just didn't talk much? I, I don't want to say he was a semi mute, but he just he he wasn't a talker. He would talk out of last case necessity. Like you could have a full conversation with him, you'd be like, "Sup, dude," and he just head nod. And he'd be like, "Okay, what are you doing later?" And he'd just give you like a laugh. And like in your head, for some reason, you still thought you were having a full conversation, but you weren't. There was nothing on the other side for the month, or it was like three months of four loco. He was talk. He was fully funk operational talking it was yeah. it was wild i think it was i think it was october of 2010 yeah but it's halloween for sure <laughs> it was definitely halloween when you tried to burn down the dorm no come on we'll tell maybe that's starts with jake getting <laughs> off work and downing two four locos on his walk to the bar it ends with jake weeping his eyes out in the bedroom <laughs> and in between he tried to fight me and also tried to burn down the dorm well, maybe we'll just give these details out bit by bit as the podcast goes. That's all we're giving for today. I like that I opened up and we talked about the baby shower and be, me being like, hey, let's tell a little bit about ourselves. And that's the part that you've told is now. It's not my fault that Matt gave us a story about Four Locos. I have to tell my Four Loco experience. Yeah, I guess fair, fair is fair. I didn't try to burn down the dorm. That makes me sound like an arsonist. We don't know what your intention was. We know that you grabbed a gasoline tank can walk towards gonna the door with four loco and you dropped it in the middle of the street. The next morning, the fire truck was there cleaning it up with like hazmat suits. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next caller. All right. We got another voice or email from Laurel. This one's a bit interesting. It's just about two guys got that got kicked out, but, uh, they were 18. They were by the right field wall while players were warming up. Pineda was out there doing his stretches because he was the starter that night. Game hasn't started. They're all out there hanging out. Two men in their late 20s, that could have been us, we're in our late 20s, come up. They start shouting at him trying to get his attention. When all else failed, they turn to us and say, come on, help us out. He loves white girls. So Laurel is a white girl. Then they proceed to tell us how they drunkenly pierced each other's nipples in college at a party and warned us to never make the same mistake. Now, that's solid advice from these Drunk guys that want Pineda's attention. Like Don't bad, bad drunk guy pickup line at that point. Super bad pickup line. Good advice. Good advice. Don't try to drunkenly right. pierce your friend's nipples ever. And, yeah. Haven't been there. Okay. So these guys are they're late 20s. They tried to pierce each other's nipples. They're at the game early drunk just trying to get Pineda's attention. It's just like what's the end goal there? Before they played the national anthem, we decided to go sit down and say goodbye to our new compadres. In the bottom of the sixth inning, we heard some commotion coming from the section over and a few rows down. And sure enough, it was those exact two men being escorted in handcuffs by security. I'm not sure what they did to be kicked out, but I'm also not surprised seeing as they're 
pretty tipsy. Jakes, what's your best guess that these guys did to get kicked out from all the information given to you? Let's see. The kind of bros that casually pierce each other's nipples. I, I don't hang out with a lot of dudes that have done that. I, if you, if you come in before the game and casually mentioning to girls that you get your nipples pierced and you're under the influence, it, it doesn't go uphill from there. It's no. not like you, you start sobering up in the stands and you're like, wow, you know, Pineda's fastball really looks good today. No, you don't, you don't go that. It just, go, it spirals downhill from there. So they, uh, I'm going to say they were, they had too many daiquiris. I think they were probably piercing their nipples again. Like they, they tried <laughs> to use the pickup line again. Like, yeah, we pierced our nipples in college and someone, and the girls were like, ah, prove it. And then they were like, shit, they're not pierced. So they turned around, tried to pierce each other's nipples real quick in the stands, bloody right, all over. Security's stand. like, we can't have this guys. <laughs> we can't, we can't have you guys piercing each other's nipples in the stands of Yankee stadium. So that's wild. So Laurel, if now you know what they got kicked out for. <laughs> no, you know. They're Pearson. All right, Max Manis. He's got a story, and I'm just going to summarize. He says there's these drunk guys that were in the bullpen in the eighth inning, and they really wanted to get a ball tossed up. So they took out their wallet, started throwing $10 bills into the bullpen, yelling down for a ball. No one was warming up. No bullpen coach or catcher was out there. No one. But he was still determined, so he started throwing down 20, still nothing, kicked in next gear, starts throwing 50s. He must have thrown 300 into the bullpen that day. No one ever came out to warm up, still didn't get a ball. This could have been our good friend, Ken, who got the ticket for not peeing in public because Ken likes throwing money around. But what's, I mean, what's the end goal there? Have you ever tried to interact with the bullpen during a game? I don't think I have. I don't talk to strangers, Jake. You talk to strangers. You think I'm going to yell down to the bullpen? Like, what would you even say? Hey, hey, David, how, how are you today? Try your hardest, do your best. Yeah, that's uh, not like I would say that. Try your hardest, do your best. That's good advice. That's almost as good as don't try to drunkenly pierce each other's nipples. But right. no, I've never – because I go to batting practice, little kid, I've caught seven balls at games before, but I was never like, Paul, Paul, Paul. Right. We, I got te- what? we got – me and my sister got Ted Lilly's signature at an Orioles game. I just remembered that. My one aunt used to tell me I looked like Ted Lilly. Uh, yeah, take away the facial hair, make you not as ugly. And what's the next one? A little taller, a little, a little thinner. What do you think the bullpen did with that money? You think they were just sitting there watching money float down? Like, why would we ever make this stop? That's definitely definitely bullpen security guard. That was that was his tip for the day. Or the bullpen catcher. They do some crazy shit for money. Yeah. We have a voicemail for one. Someone called in with a voicemail. Let me pull it up because I am. Um, that's not it. Come on, Jimmy. Be better. That's not it either. Be better. Be better. All right. Here it is. I found it, Jake. I found it. Cut all this out in the podcast. Everyone listening to YouTube gets it. All right. Bad. We're officially bad radio. And I might be saving it. What's up, guys? It's Sam. So I live in Orlando, so I don't go to a ton of Yankee games. But my uncle, who lives in New York, has eight tickets. He's got four, like, VIP seats, like first row, first base side. And then he's got four bleacher seats. And the first time I went to a game, I was about seven years old. So keep in mind, seven-year-old, and I went into the bleacher seats. And I had I was shocked. Like there were the guys in front of us probably had eight beers through the first three innings and then there was a Red Sox fan right in front of them and they were just like yelling at this guy the whole time. Then like this huge fight broke out and everyone was just punching everyone. There were like eight guys ejected. So these like fifth row bleach seats ended up being like first row, which was pretty awesome. But yeah, picture a seven year old. First time ever to a Yankee game, big fan, like there to see Derek Jeter, and all of a sudden this happens. So, see you guys with the podcast. 
All right, Sam Tromolando, he's called before. Basically, he was really young and saw a fight. The cool part is the fight happened in front of him, so he got the seed upgrade because of it. Yeah, win. I sat on the episode with Joe's McFly. I used to sit in right field and just – I wouldn't even watch the game. I just watched the Bleacher Creatures, the fights. Well, I remember one time a guy got kicked out of the Bleachers, and they didn't connect in the old stadium, you know? And so he went out and bought a ticket from a scalper, but it wasn't for the Bleachers. It was for the stadium, like the other part. So he came in and sat right next to me and my dad. And it was, to me, as a little kid, it was as if a player came off the field and sat next to me. Because I was like, Dad, Dad, that's the guy that just got kicked out. He's back. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I saw I was like a hero. I was like, hey, hey, mister, mister. Probably like a 21-year-old just Strong drunk move. asshole. Getting a ticket coming back in? Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Why not? I'd probably go to stands and beer. All right. Any more stories? In Oakland, before they tarped off the third deck, people would run into the bathroom, grab toilet paper roll, and then run up to the third deck and just fire toilet paper out. And it right. would go like over the crowd and stuff. That was kind of cool. It was like <laughs> it was a weird thing that caught on. I've got something for you. And this is kind, kind of t- drunk stadium fight topics. If someone sees you wearing Yankee gear, whether it's at an Oakland game or just on the streets, and they give you, hey, Yankees suck. Well, do you do you give them anything back? Like, what what's your reaction? Go Yanks. Okay, I like that. That's, I mean, hey, Yankees suck. Hey, what's up? Go Yanks. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're we're pure kill them with kindness, guys. I am a one hundred percent kill them with kindness guy. Oh no, oh, man, I like the I like the Yankees. I hope they do really well. Yeah, they're pretty, yeah. They're, pretty they're pretty good. I was walking to my car after the baby shower today with Katie, my girlfriend. There was this guy, scary look, scary looking guy, way bigger than me, smoking a cigarette, just walking down, hood up, everything. And uh, I, I, I slightly put, you know, Katie on the outside and me on the inside because, you know, right. I'm a gentleman, You're boxing and a scholar. And, uh, and I don't know if he saw me do that move and was offended or what happened, but he just stared at me and said, What's up, fool? Nice. Pretty, pretty anger, anger. Yeah. kind of looked in my direction and i said uh nothing man what's going on how you having a good night <laughs> yeah kill him with kindness just, is always the answer kill him with kindness is the way to go for the rest of your life that's just really good advice also think- really good advice if you're a high school or a college kid and the holidays came and you just got a bunch of gift cards like those like amex or whatever, you know, their bank cards, but their gift cards, just money on it, not designated for any place. Save those and just use them for beers at stadiums. That's what I did whenever. I don't get those anymore because I'm too old. Right. When I was college, you know, someone gives you a $100 gift card for your birthday or something like that. That's uh, uh, that was Those were my stadium beer funds because too expensive to be using. Wow. Room. Good advice, right? That? Yeah. I think we, for whether it's next show or not, have – Fan fan feedback. What's everyone's best response if someone just gives you, "Hey, Yankees suck." People are gonna have such bad. Res- I, I'm in, I'm for it. I I'm know. For it. So yeah, if you're listening, that adds to it. I I'll, like that. I'll tweet it out. We'll ask for. Um, just tweet back your response. I'll get a bunch. If if you're walking down the street and someone says Yankees suck, what's your response? People are. I I guarantee you, you suck. What, Twenty seven championships. What what if we can make like a team? You know, that, that's what you're talking about, a better fan experience. What if we can have a cool, low-key Yankee thing that's just the perfect, you know, I, I just want everyone to agree. No, I, I like the Yankees. They're good. Yeah. Something like no, that. I think we're going we'll to have a, no, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna have a good season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. I want, I want to see what the people have. All right. So that's, that's what we got for stadium stories. Nothing too crazy came in. I want, no. I want the weird. I want the, you know, I met my wife at the stadium. Right. Have you ever seen that old YouTube video of a guy at Dodger Stadium and a girl just going at it and one camera guy was on there? It's on YouTube. It's it's a threesome. It's a threesome in the stands of the third deck of Dodger Stadium. And it's for like social media and shit. Is, yeah, uh, I don't think it's sex. A lot, a lot of fingers, a lot of hands, maybe some okay. mouth. But it's, I think it's on YouTube. It's crazy. It's pretty, pretty bizarre. That. The other thing we said was Meta Yankee, another little segment we want to keep going if you ever meet a Yankee, which will be a little less often than stadium stories. But I got an email 
And it's not anything crazy that happened. Isabel, Isabella wrote in, but I, there's aspects of this I really like. Um, let me try and sum this up. I've had a crazy experience with CC in December, 2016. I went on vacation to Maui with my family. We went to a luau at a resort on New Year's Eve and noticed this family wearing cute matching outfits who looked kind of familiar, but didn't think much of it. The next day at the pool, we see this tall, pretty big dude in a bulls jersey passing by us, by us with a few kids. I realized in about two sec, point two seconds, it was CC with his family freaking out. It all made sense. Um, shouldn't have bothered him, but we said hi. Said we were huge fans. Couldn't have been nicer. He couldn't have been nicer to us when we, when he probably should have been an asshole and said no. My dad and I shook his hand and wished him luck for the season. Turns out my brothers became semi friends with his youngest son. They built the sand castle together on the beach. I'll never forget how friendly he was. Every time we saw him after that, not quite as cool as your bird experience, but it was totally unexpected. All right, so it's not that crazy. They met CC at a resort. Cool. Two aspects I love to this. One, CC and his family were matching outfits. Definitely right. not CC's doing. His wife Amber. I looked up pictures from her Instagram, December 2016, because I was like, I want to see these matching outfits. It's these and like these light blue. They're like four kids just stand on the beach. What do you think? Do you think CC secretly loves that? Oh, absolutely. I think I think everyone hits a per. I you look at it as a bad thing when you're a young kid saying like, oh, that's such an old man thing to do. You hit that appreciation point where you're like, this is tremendous. We're a family. Yeah. Other thing is they say every time C as she said every time CC saw them afterwards, they said hi, which is yeah, nice of CC, but like what are you gonna do when you're at a resort? So you share the elevator with a dude like one time at a resort. Every time you see that guy, the rest of the time you're like, Hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. Resort resort life is this weird, like you're part of this community now. So yes, CC had to say hi to you every time he did. Otherwise, he's not good at resort life. Pretty good that CC's required to say hi to you. I, yeah. That was the part that jumped out to me. CC wearing a Bulls jersey. Love CC being a jersey guy on vacation. That's why. That's why his wife had to get the matching outfits. Otherwise, CC would just be jersey guy the whole time. There's some Instagrams of their latest trip. They went to Africa safari, and they're all, all the kids are wearing like white, and CC is wearing a, a bull, uh, like an inside out jersey, so it looks white. <laughs> Love that. Okay, uh, we're at. We're at 53 minutes. We had some voicemails about. I don't even want to get into them. Here, I'll sum them up. Sorry if you called in. I'm not going. We're out of time. They're not pressing <laughs> issues. We'll, Jake, we'll talk a little. We'll talk a little baseball. <laughs> one, yeah. There's nothing going on. One sentence, Jake, about the Brewers signing Mustakis and then trading Shaw, and the Yankees being in on Shaw. That's the that's a theory or a rumor. One sentence, a couple words, thoughts. First, I've heard about it. <laughs> it's it's all rumors. I'm I'm sorry. Sure, it doesn't make any sense to me because I think Shaw's better than Mustaka. So why would you when you have Shaw for four years of contract control? But yeah, if, if Shaw if they're offering Shaw up in a trade, yeah, grab him. He's good power bat lefty. I don't know. I will I will say this with free agency and everything that's going on. A very interesting time to be a smaller market team. We. We we won't dive into it, but Jacoby Ellsbury, we talked about different things. But the Yankees would be trading prospects to get rid of Jacoby Ellsbury. So think, if you were a small market team and you could get the Yankees to pay half a salary, have a serviceable baseball player, and get two prospects in your pipeline, I don't know. I, I think it, it's a guerrilla warfare of sorts. You, you can there's, – there's different ways to go about it. I, Travis Shaw was really good last year. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, one guy called up said, from Wyoming. we got a fan from Wyoming that called in, asked, where do you think Girardi ends up? I think that's hard to say because every team has a coach right now, a manager right now. So you don't know where the openings are going to be up. He thinks uh, Cardinals, Girardi steps, takes in after Matheny because Matheny probably goes, I can see that happening. I think National League, but I also just think wherever, I think, I think Girardi is going to manage again. So wherever an opening is. I, I think it's going to be a little while. I, I think he's going to hold out for a perfect gig because on paper, his resume is extremely impressive. Yep. So he's I'm, – I'm not saying he's going to John Gruden it and be in the booth for as long as Gruden was, but he, he's going to be in the booth, get, get paid millions casually, and then once he gets the itch and the right job opens, he'll take it. 
Okay, Josh Harrison, you in or out on Josh Harrison if it makes sense. So what I'm saying is if the Yankees if the Yankees get Josh Harrison and you are fine with what they gave up to get him, are you happy about that? So what do you feel about Josh Harrison on the Yankees just skill-wise, just joining the team? But I don't want to get into yeah, the rest. It's, I I would love it obviously for the right price. It's that it people kind of overlook he's a two-time All-Star. He was an All-Star last year. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, just adding, adding him for the right price that, that makes me go in angry Yankee mode. Like he's, it's, you know, it's not adding a Giambi, Giancarlo, A-Rod type move, but it's still an all-star caliber player. Who's like great for t- modern day baseball. He can play four positions. He gives you such flexibility and he's from what everyone says, he's a solid dude. So yes. Every 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 MLB team wants Josh Harrison. How about that? Awesome. Okay. Next up, speaking of all stars and guys that can play a lot of positions, do you think Romine is the backup catcher for next year? And are you okay with that? Do you think they should go after another backup guy? Someone asked this last week, but you had to go because you're on a ski trip. And I said, um, Romine is the guy. His job is to be serviceable once a week. Not ruin the game. We don't need Roman winning games for us. You just need him not blowing games for us. Give Gary once or rest. Be better than last year. But I don't think the way the luxury is going and all that, that spending money on a backup catcher makes any sense. Your thoughts? The Everyone's been mentioning Alex Avila because he's a lefty and pretty good. I, I don't see that. The only thing that would talk me out of Roman would be a super veteran defensive catcher that Gary would just be BFFs with. I that's something okay. I I kind of overlooked and I, one of the names that got mentioned last week I Eric forget. Betts? No. Like they they need to be a defensive but they need they need a Molina type reputation. And I'm I'm forgetting, let me see, see if I can google it real quick. Um, Kratz wouldn't get along with Gary anyway because Kratz is basically Amish. Oh, okay. Um, who's um? God, there was one name that really jumped out. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I don't know. He was a he was a t- good radio. He was a typical. <laughs> I don't want to say fat guy catcher. That's that's tough. Um, fat okay, guy catcher, I'm, good at defense. That's what the keys you're giving me. Rene Rivera. I think he was. He was the name that kind of jumped out to me as a typical guy that's in the major league because he's a defensive catcher. Well, um, so yeah, if if it was somebody because Romine's great defensively, and from what we've heard, he's a good guy in the clubhouse. But if, I lost it. Guess how that again? What we heard is Romine is great in the clubhouse, and we're fine. And he's he's a def- he's a perfect backup catcher from everything we've heard. It's if there was someone that could be brought in, and not to dramatize the Gar- Gary's defensive struggles, but bring in bring in a <laughs> veteran defensive backup catcher. Like that's never been a bad move in baseball, right? No, <laughs> and no. Romine's could- supposed to be the good catcher. And yeah, he, he is. You and you could still upsell it to Romine. He's young enough that you could say, "Hey, we brought in this vet to work with Gary. You're going to get a ton of at bats in AAA, and you know this this team will need you at some point this year, something like that." Um, if if Romine is the backup catcher opening day, n- not no qualms, no qualms. Okay, cool. That is the rest of our show. Hopefully, there's news. There's rumors stirring. If anything happens, we will. Hop back to talk about those. Um, we have think if, if nothing happens again next week and we got to do another show with nothing happening, I don't know. <laughs> Let's go on with Stadium Stories Part 2. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure something out. We'll try to do something. If you have ideas, anything you want to hear that's not related. I can't do rumors anymore. Either yeah. we're talking about a move that has happened and it's finalized. I can't do rumors. I'd rather poke myself. You know what? I actually – I'll talk to you off air about a plan for next week. Wow. Sucks Um, for you guys. Yeah, it sucks for you guys. That's the rest of the show. Thanks for listening.
Really appreciate it. We are at 96 ratings right now on iTunes. Uh, it'd be cool to get above 100. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It'd be cool to go to two digit to three digit. So four of you want to be nice and special, hit that up. Get us to 100 ratings. Write a review if you want. Tell Jake his haircut looks good. His haircut was looking super rough last week. I think he watched the replay and was like, "Gotta do something about that." Okay. Did your mom watch it? And she like tell you get a haircut? No, I, dude, I don't like the fresh cut before like events. So like, I've got a wedding. Oh hey, I've got a wedding in a couple haircut. weekends. I got a hat on right now. Oh, and you're and just gonna drop that bomb right now. I got a haircut today. I got a wedding right now, and um. I got. I don't know what I'm saying. No one, I've no been, one listening cares about what we're saying right now because we're talking about our hair. I've got a wedding, and like, I'm I'm the guy that gets a wedding. If I have a wedding, I'm gonna get a haircut, like, two three weeks before. How many weeks? Some, some people are like day of, like two to three weeks. That's a, a long time before. I am I like, not a day I, of. I need a comfort level with yeah. what's going on. I need I need two practice weeks before I I need spring training for my hair, and then you get it good looking good for one week, and then it's dog shit, and then and then day of the wedding I still want the dunk. <laughs> All right, that's talking hair. Thanks talking for listening. Hair. Let's talk Yanks. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for the emails. Stadium stories. If you Four have reviews. anything you remembered, something crazy, um, let us know. Those are fun. I'd and stadium reviews, I think, once this season starts rolling, is going to be awesome. We get get yeah. some different perspectives from home games, get an angle from right field, get a center field, you know, people from the game that were both there. So I'm I'm excited for that. One time, me and my dad went to a game, and we were in the upper deck, and um, this guy hated Posada. This old man, he <laughs> just absolutely hated Posada. I think he might have had Tourette's. It might have been something going on, but he hated hated sure. number twenty Jorge Posada. And my Zero. dad just kept yelling things like, well, hey, best defensive catcher since Munson. <laughs> this guy was like 80 years old. And he didn't turn around and yell back at my dad, but you could see his whole body clam up and tighten up. Right. Poor A. Isn't that crazy? It's just crazy to be like, just hate a guy so much. I've, I've got a good stadium, sir. I don't. If people are still listening at this point. It's not Yankee Stadium. It's just a stadium mindset. Okay, go. Went to a Broncos Patriots game at Foxborough with our our buddy Chapin. We're Sunday night game. Everyone's messed up. I'm wearing a. This shows my stadium personality. I was wearing a Brian Greasy Broncos Broncos jersey. So people would see the Broncos jersey and they'd be like, "Oh, Broncos suck!" And then they see the name on the back and they'd be like, "Oh, okay." That's that's different. Maybe he's related to Brian or something. Went into the bath went into the bathroom in like the third quarter and things are getting accents are out. F this, F that, screw you. Uh pissa. And so one guy is clearly coming at me. I'm the only Broncos guy in the bathroom. And he's just coming at me. Broncos suck, you suck, blah blah blah. Every other thing to the point that I'm just straight ignoring it and giving some head nods that most of the bathroom is now on my side. He's, he's just being a bad person at this point. And then our buddy Chapin goes, Oh yeah. You think that's bad? He's a Yankees fan too. <laughs> In the, the bathroom, you could have heard a pin drop. It was one of the scariest moments of my life. I thought they were going to have me like bite the urinal and, start whooping on me thank the good lord chapin so you just chapin, ate the urinal cake and ran chapin chapin quick thinking goes oh i'm just messing with you guys but if he did not i was about to get a a, a butt kicking if you could say that on the air so you know what's gonna happen all those fans in there were like oh you're a yankees fan huh and then they were gonna pull down their pants and shake their dick at you <laughs> been there that's no. a callback. That's professional podcasting. That's how we're ending the show. That's Thanks for listening. Thanks for talking Yanks with us. Really appreciate it. Rate, review, subscribe. Help us out. Get through this boring ass off season. Respond. Let us know what you respond to people when they tell you the Yankees suck. And uh, go Yankees. Tell them, Grandma. Bye. <laughs>